Airsoft shotguns have always been replicas that have inspired the imagination and have always there to provide a lot of realism when it came to the shooting experience. Everything about them is fun. The racking action is satisfying, the sound it makes feels gritty, and even it has some realistic loading and shell ejecting features. But it seems like with all things in Airsoft, we've somehow kind of hit a wall. Everything kind of feels the same. And even though there are some really cool offerings out there from Dominator and APS and even Token Marui, at the end of the day, they're quintessentially the same pump action shotgun built on the same platform, the 870. Now this doesn't apply in everything in Airsoft. Over the years, we've seen many things evolve over time, such as the M4 GBB platform. They've come from relatively basic systems to ultra realistic replicas like we see from VFC or even some guns from rare arms that even shell eject. Yes, the old adage goes, don't fix what ain't broke. But we as players, collectors, and of course, overall consumers want more. There's a void in our hearts and it needs filling. But what if there was something out there that was essentially more, but for one way or another, kind of just flew under the radar. Semi-auto shotguns are fantastic guns in the real steel world and are used in everything from self-defense to competition to hunting. But have you ever wanted one for Airsoft? But what if I told you they already made one? Oh yes, you may ask yourself, if they already made one, then why are they not a thing? Good question. And that's what we're here to find out. This is the Maruzan M1100 semi-automatic shotgun. And we're here to see if this gun was ahead of its time or now is the time. Some of you out there may not know the brand Maruzen, but Maruzen is a Japanese airsoft manufacturer that makes some really cool products. Amongst them is the M11. Now their M11 is considered by many to be the best version of the M11 available. If you wanna check that product out, click on the card above or in the description below. But they also make a wide variety of shotguns, namely pump actions and of course, this one right here, their M1100. This is the Maruzen M1100 in all of its real wood glory. This gun is an amalgamation of metal, wood, and really high quality plastic. And this is the Maruzen M1100 semi-automatic shotgun in a beautiful mix of metal, plastic, and yes, that is really real wood. Now crafted exceptionally well, as you can see, this dark wood does match very nicely with this black gun. It is very, I would say elegant look. Now the plastic parts on this gun are the barrel, the receiver, and the trigger guard area. The metal is the bolt, this ring, and the magazine tube, which makes perfect sense. Speaking of the magazine tube, I'm so happy that this magazine tube doesn't cut off right here because those short, you know, stubby magazine tubes with a long barrel, let's just be honest, that look looks kind of hokey. This gun is gas powered, so you can find the gas tank in the stock and you can remove the gas tank by pinching onto the side of the butt pad and pulling it out. And the gun comes with three shells. Now being a Japanese gun, a lot of times it will recommend you to use that 134A compressed gas or the duster compressed air for this gun. However, you can use green gas if you want. We've had friends of mine that have used Marusian shotguns before with green gas and they've really not reported any issues. So if you wanna use green gas, you can use it to your heart's content. Now, with that in mind, there is a really cool feature about this gun that I would like to share with you while we're on the topic of gas. If you pump this gas tank full, put it back in the gun, you can actually dry fire it with ease and this bolt will cycle. So if you wanna dry fire or practice or use it for any of those particular reasons, go ahead, it works just fine. So. Here we are at gun range zero. So you know what that means, right? That means it's time to shoot the thing. We're gonna do two things. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about the spread of the shotgun. Being a shotgun, we wanna see how tight that package is gonna be when we send that thing down range. So I'm gonna set up three targets, five, 10, and 15 meters out. Hopefully we can hit the one at 15, but we're gonna talk about the spread after we finished all the shooting. The second thing we're gonna do is like kind of like a three gun thing. Well, more like a two gun thing. I have a pistol, an RWA Nighthawk Custom Recon, as well as, of course, our shotgun, and we're gonna put it through its paces. We're gonna see if this boy can run and gun with the best of them. So, less of me talking, let's get right to shoot. I got my gun stand, I got my shells, got my shotgun, got my target, we're about to shoot. Now, the magazine tube here can hold seven shots plus one in the chamber, so eight in total. Loading it, it's simple, pushing in the breech here, All right, 
Five meters. So from five meters away, the spread was pretty significant. And by that, I mean a good portion of the BBs didn't even hit the target. But from what we can see, it's one from here and one from here. That's roughly from my thumb to my pinky. Give or take, that is about eight and a half, nine inches. Now for the target at 10 meters. Now this is kind of exactly what I thought would happen. With that spread being so significant at five meters, at 10 meters, I didn't know if anything would hit, but we have one hit. So that's something, right? You know what would have made that whole shooting experience so much easier? Sights. If I had some sights, man, it'd be so much easier. Or pick a tinny rail where I can put an optic on it. <sighs> something to help me see, at least. I feel like the gun's going in the right direction, but there's still some, there's still something left. You know, something yet to be desired. Now on to the next portion. Hey, welcome to the 50 meter range test. Ah, yes, about that. So what happened was at 10 meters, the spread was already so ridiculously large that at 15 meters, it can absolutely not hit the target. So we just skipped over that part and went straight into the second part, which we did the two gun style shooting. I know I should have mentioned that in the video earlier. My bad guys, but hey, thanks Quake for reminding me. Now it's time for us to run a simple two gun course. The first part I'm going to be using this RWA Nighthawk Custom Recon 1911. Wow, we'll shoot these targets here. Then I'm going to move to that position and take out those three targets on this side. Then I'll finish off by shooting three more targets with the shotgun. You're ready? I'm ready. Let's go. fun not bad really fun gun few takeaways the trigger a little on the stiff side it's going to be hard for you to run this gun a little fast i'm sure that if the trigger was modified a little bit to have a smoother softer take up this can be a fantastic competition rifle again no sights would be nice to have some sights other than that let's go back to the studio so here's something believe it or not this is not the first time this gun has been featured here on Red Wolf TV. Actually, this gun has made its appearance on Red Wolf TV before with a very skinny and very unswole Tim, as well as Taz. So imagine how long ago that's been. If you wanna check out that really old video, click on the card above or you can find it in the description below. Now, let's get back to my final thoughts about this shotgun. Now, when this gun came out back in the day, it really didn't take because during that time, if you watch that video that I recommended from Tim and Taz, you could see back then shotguns were kind of dominated by those spring shotguns you get from Tokyo Marui, right? Or the early generation of the pump action gas shotguns that Maruzen even made. And of course, not to mention the GNP infamous pump action sniper rifles. I mean, shotguns that were overly tactical. And so when you threw this gun in the mix, Shotguns at the time didn't seem to be that viable of a platform anyways. They were more of a gimmick, they were more of a toy, and it was not something that it would serve any purpose. Competition wasn't a thing, and you definitely weren't going to take a shell-ejecting shotgun to a game, right? I mean, you don't even do that now. I know it sounds all kind of doom and gloom. Back in the day, shotguns were kind of just you know, something you would poo-poo on until Tokyo Marui came out with their gas TM870 system several years down the road. What it did to shotguns then was it really kind of propelled it into the future. It gave a platform for aftermarket parts manufacturers to come up with different gas tanks, different shells, 
different inner barrels, hop-ups for all of this Tokimarui stuff that kind of made shotguns relevant again. Not to mention, suddenly, this prevalence of three-gun and different shotgun competitions out there that just sprung up out of nowhere, making airsoft competition scene, you know, a thing. So you gave rise to things like APS and Dominator. And again, voila, there you go. Shotguns are suddenly relevant. But at the end of the day, where does it leave our boy here? The whole theme of this video feels like this gun has just perpetually been overlooked, which is sad because I feel like now is the time to revisit a platform like this. And with a little bit of TLC and with some aftermarket parts and support, I'm pretty sure a gun like this can give the other big boys, especially in the competition sphere like Dominator and APS, a big run for their money. Now, are there any problems with the gun? Yes. How about a Picatinny rail for optics? How about a bolt lock feature? You know what? How about a pair of sights? That would be nice, right? And not to mention, there is one big problem. But I don't feel like it's just this gun's problem. I feel like it's shotguns as a whole. There is one thing I feel like a lot of the shotgun manufacturers really need to step up or just have not figured out yet. And that is how to deliver a real bang. Now we've seen M4, AK, and, and other manufacturers out there when they make their gas blowbacks and you pull that trigger, oh, you're gonna know that there's something gonna happen. There's some pomp and circumstance when you pull the trigger of let's say an SR25 ECC. But it doesn't matter if it's the APS, doesn't matter if it's the Dominator, doesn't matter if it's Token Marui, or this one, when you pull the trigger, sad to say, it's a little underwhelming. And that's one of the big drawbacks of a platform like the Airsoft Shotgun that I always feel like it's a detriment to itself. And it's that there's really no pomp and circumstance or there's no ruckus and there's no, there's no feeling of just, there's no bombastic feeling of pulling a trigger and you just go in just the satisfying bang. Because you know, when you shoot a real steel shotgun, that's one of the big things you're gonna take away. It's the loud noise. It is the violence of the gun kicking into you. And sadly, that's one thing that is yet to be translated into Airsoft. But then, what do you guys think? Does that make sense to you? Does it mean a lot to you that it doesn't go bang when you pull the trigger? Or is there something that you would like to see improved upon for this particular shotgun? Now, let me know all of those thoughts in the comment section below, and I'll probably see you there. Now, if you want cool products like this and many more, don't forget to check out our online store at www.rebelfairsoft.com. Now, if you like this video, give us a thumbs up. If you thought it was cool, don't forget to share. And if you haven't subscribed yet, hit the subscribe button. And if you want to get notified for new videos every time we come out, hit that notification bell. And I'm Mark, aka Blue Steel, and I'll catch you guys on the next episode of Rebel TV. Have a good one, everybody.